I teach nuclear policy here at UC Santa Cruz, and I work with a public policy organization, the Committee to Bridge the Gap. Okay. Um, and I understand you recently did a report um, analyzing the uh, California Council on Science and Technology's uh, report uh, on the health, potential health impacts of smart meters. Can you tell a little, talk a little bit about uh, what the shortcomings of that report were? Uh, of t uh, two varieties. One was that the state legislators who had requested the study asked for an independent science-based study of this matter. They did so because they were concerned that they were hearing from PG&E that there's nothing to worry about and they wanted someone that was disinterested to look independently. What troubled me is that instead of doing an independent review, uh, CCST just reproduced claims that the Electric Power Research Institute had made, which in turn turned out to have been conducted by the same person in PG&E that had made the uh, claims that were supposed to be independently reviewed. Richard Tell. Tell, yeah. yeah. And then secondly, with substance, the EPRI report contained a table, which was then taken by the California Council, purporting to compare the RF radiation doses from a smart meter and a cell phone and a microwave oven. And the problem is that they compared apples and oranges. Um, they looked at a whole body exposure from a smart meter and compared it to the dose to the ear from a cell phone instead of looking at the whole body dose from the cell phone and comparing it to the whole body dose for the smart meter. And secondly, they assumed a 100% duty cycle for the smart meter and a 1% duty cycle for the cell phone. You're only using the cell phone part of an hour per day on average. But they didn't correct for that. So they didn't look at the cumulative exposure. 99% of the time the cell phone wasn't producing radiation, but they assumed that 100% of the time the uh, smart meter would. I think the smart meter figure they'd exaggerated a little bit. I thought 50% would probably be a reasonable upper number. But in any case, when you correct for these two factors, the whole body and the cumulative part of it, rather than a cell phone being 100 times more exposure than a smart meter, the smart meter turns out to be roughly 100 times more cumulative exposure than the cell phone. That's a pretty different conclusion. Did, did you um, convey these inaccuracies to any members of the legislature? Yes, both to um, Senator Member Huffman's office and to Senator Member Monning's office. And I've urged them to request the California Council to, in its final report, revise these uh, findings to give an answer to the fundamental question, what is the cumulative whole body exposure comparative difference? Um, in your opinion, is how uh, you know dangerous uh, or, or safe? Uh, you know, what's the what's the risk here to the public if potentially um, you know if if your figures are correct? It is so much more times uh, greater than cell phone. We don't know. Um, at the moment, it is uncertain what the health effect is from RF radiation. It could turn out to be significant. It could turn out to be insignificant. It's a large experiment on a very large population. A big chunk of that experiment is in involuntary one. If I use a cell phone, I choose to use a cell phone. If I live in a house, I don't choose to have a smart meter. And if tens of millions of people have smart meters placed on their homes, and if the radiation dose from that smart meter may be a um, hundred times higher than a cell phone, whole body exposure, cumulative, then we may, decades from now, discover that we have produced a fair amount of cancers. We may discover we produce none. But it seemed to me inappropriate for the council to simply take something from the industry without checking it and to not do it in units that are comparable. And it's a simple thing to fix. And if they don't fix it, I, I, I would be troubled. Okay. Thank you very much, sure. Daniel. Thank you so much. Does it remind you of what goes on with the yes. nuclear? Yeah. It nuclear. reminded me very much. And remember, with ionizing radiation, it took a long time to recognize that it wasn't just an acute risk that mm -hmm. I can cause a Hiroshima type disease, but that there's a latent cancer. Cumulative. Cumulative exposure producing a latent illness which takes decades to manifest itself. I think it's an uh, interesting example of how our authorities and the Japanese authorities have tended to suffer from pressures to initially try to reassure people to lowball the estimates of risk to uh, try to get people to uh, not worry. Um, in some situations, the fact that it took them weeks to elevate the risk level from a five to a seven, when they knew within days they were really at a seven. 
um, is part of this desire that we saw also with the BP problems in the Gulf. You know, they were saying that a thousand barrels a day of oil was being released, but wouldn't release the evidence on which that was based. And eventually, the estimates went up and up and up. Uh, partially for liability reasons, you want it to seem like you've released less oil or less radioactivity than you have. Partially because you can't believe it yourself. Partially to reassure people. But those tendencies end up causing more mistrust rather than greater trust. 